Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to split a circular linked list. So for example, let's assume that we're given the following circular linked list with nodes A, B, C, D, and there's an arrow and an ellipsis. This ellipsis just means that this arrow is pointing back to the head of the list because it is a circular linked list after all, uh, but it's a bit hard to draw curved arrows in the comments in Python. So this ellipsis just means that it keeps going back in around on itself. So A, B, C, D, back to the head of the node, A, B, C, D, back to the head, so on. So that's the list that we're given as input, and the split list function, what we want, what we desire at the end of the day, is we want to split the list in two. So the first half of the circular linked list will be the first half of the list that we're given. So in this case, A, B. Again, we have an arrow and an ellipsis to denote that this is a circular linked list. So we're splitting it into one circular linked list here. And then we take the remaining nodes, which are right there, and we're moving those into another circular linked list, which is right here. So this is C, D, again, the ellipsis, go back to the head, C, D, and so on and so forth. So we split this initial circular linked list into two separate circular linked lists. So I've gone ahead and created a circular linked list object here using the class that we defined in the previous video. And I've gone ahead and appended these nodes with data elements to correspond to the example that we just went over in the comments. And then I have a call right here to the split list function that we'll be filling in as the primary motive of this video. So the way that we're going to be solving this problem is we're going to be going through the list node by node. And the first thing we want to do in order to split it is find the length of the list. So right now we don't have a way of calculating the length of the list, so we'll need to figure out how to do that. But once we have the length of the list, we can also calculate the midpoint. And what we'll do is we'll go to the midpoint of the list, we'll change the orientation of this pointer here to point back to the head, because again, this is a circular linked list that's, that takes care of the first half of the list. And then for the second half, this part right here, will basically start from this point, move along until we hit the end of the list, or at least until this thing is the head of the list. And then we'll reorient this pointer to point back to the actual head of the list, which is this C right here. So the first thing is first is we need to find a way to actually calculate the length of a circular linked list. So let's do that first. So we're gonna define a function which we'll call underscore underscore len and this will be part of the class. If you're not familiar with these underscores, len, and then underscores, basically this is us telling Python to override this len function. So you've probably seen something like if you have, let's say a string, which is like, hello, you can calculate the length of that string in Python by saying len of s, and that will tell you how many characters is in that string. So what we're doing is we're essentially overriding this method to operate on a object of circular linked list so we're defining an object here, and we're saying this is how you actually uh, determine the length of this type of object. So we'll actually be defining how one does that. So that way we can just, given a circular linked list object, we can just say C linked list. Uh, we can actually wrap LEN around this thing. So we can, let me spell it right, we can actually determine the length of a circular linked list object once we define this functionality. So basically what we want to do is we're going to start off at the head of the list. So we're going to have a pointer that points to the head of the start of the circular linked list. And we're going to move along as long as we don't hit the end of the list. And in, the, in this case, the end of the list is given by the next pointer pointing to the head of the list. So as long as we don't have that, we'll just keep moving along node by node, keeping a count. And if we have, if we wind up at a node that is the head of the list again, then we know that we've come back to the beginning of the list and we don't want to double count, so we'll break out of that loop. And that will that count that we're keeping track of will be the length of the list. So let's actually code that up. So we're going to define, let's say, current is equal to the head of the list. And then we're going to define a count variable, which is going to keep track of the nodes in the list. And what we're going to say is while current, let's increment the count by one. Let's move the pointer to the next node in the list. And then we'll do a check here. So we're gonna check if the current node that we're on is equal to the head. So if the current node that we're on after we've gone next, if this is equal to the head, then we know that we've come back to the beginning of the linked, the circular linked list, and we want to therefore break out of this loop. So this break statement will break out of this loop, and then we can 
get right over here to uh, returning the count. So we'll return the count of that, which will give us the length of the list. Let's just verify that this actually works. So again, we have this circular linked list object, which we defined with nodes A, B, C, D. There's four nodes in this list. I'm going to comment out the split list function, and I'm just going to say print len of the uh, circular linked list object that we defined above. So again, if you aren't familiar with this convention, this underscore, double underscore, len, we're just overriding this len function in Python to operate on a circular linked list object. So I'm going to go ahead and print that out to the screen. So the length of the circular linked list is four, which makes sense because there's four nodes. Let's just make sure that this works for a circular linked list with no nodes. So I've just defined a circular linked list. There's no nodes. We're going to print out the length of that list. So the length of that list, right, rightfully so, is zero. Let's go ahead and just see if we take out two nodes. We'll make sure this actually gives us the right answer as well. So two nodes as well. Okay, so it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'll put that back to the way it was with ABCD, and I will get rid of this print statement and uncomment the split list function. So now, get rid of the extra line. Now let me go up here and actually fill in the split list function. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, determine the size of the circular linked list that we have, determine the midway point, have a pointer start off here at the head and then travel to that midway point, and then reorient these pointers in such a way that we can get these two split lists. So the first thing is first is we need to say size is equal to len of self. So again, what we're doing here is we're saying take the length of the object that we've defined. Again, we're just taking the length of self, which is the list that we're constructing in this case. So for instance, if you're uh, skeptical, if I just print out size here, let's, let's give that a run we should get four because the number of nodes in the list that we've constructed down here is four. So I'm just printing out the size of that list. We're gonna get rid of that print statement, calculating the size of that list here, and we're going to use that to calculate our midway point. So there's a few edge cases that we need to take care of first before we go on to the more general case. Namely, we could have a circular linked list with either zero or one node in it, and those are gonna be cases we're gonna to have to count for individually. So for instance, if the size of the list is zero, that is there's no nodes in the list, there's nothing to split, there's no nodes to split, so we're just going to return none. Similarly, if the size of the list is just one, then there's only one node, and we can't split one node into anything more than just the node itself. So if the size of the list is one, then we're just going to return the head of the list because that's the only node present in the list. So now we can get to the general case. So again, the general case is to calculate the midway point of a given circular linked list, have a pointer travel to that point, and then reorient these pointers in such a way that we can get to different lists. So let's do that. So I'll say mid is equal to the size divided by two, and then I'm also going to define a count variable which will keep track of, um, which will keep track of where the pointer is in the list. So let's keep track of not only where the current pointer is, but also the previous pointer, because once we get here, we'll need to tell, uh, in order to construct these two lists, we'll need to reorient this pointer here, which is corresponding to the previous node of the midway node. So we're going to want to keep track of both of those things. So I'm going to say prev is equal to none, this is the previous node, and then current will initially set be set equal to the head of the list. So what we'll do now is we'll say while current and count is less than the midway point, we're going to increment the count by one, we're going to update the state of the previous pointer, so that will be equal to the current, and then current is going to be equal to current.next, so that's just going to move right along. So let's just take a look at what we have after this while loop. Let, let me print out prev.data, let's print that out, so prints prev.data, and we're also going to print out current.data as well. So we'll see what those uh, nodes have stored. So we should see B and C. So indeed, we see the first, the previous node has B and the, the current one has C. So that's exactly what we want because the midway point in this particular list is going to start off, the second list is going to start off at this point here, and we want to keep track of the previous node to that because we want to reorient this arrow. So we have the nodes that we want. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set the next pointer. So again, this is this is the first list. So instead of this 
pointing to C, which it does now in this list, we're going to reorient this pointer so it points back in on itself because this is the first circular list. That is, this next pointer needs to point back to the head of the list. So we're going to say previous, which is this node here, dot next, which is this arrow, is going to point back to A. So that's what this ellipsis defines. So we're going to say prev.next is equal to self.head. So we've got our first list almost done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and construct our second list. So for that, I'm going to define a, another circular linked list object, which I'll call split circular linked list. And I'll define this to be of the circular li linked list class. And so now what we're going to do is, again, current is over here. So we have the current node, which is currently at this position here. And we're going to say while the current.next thing is not equal to the head, so while these pointers, th this arrow here is not pointing back to the head of this list, we're going to move right along and construct our second circular linked list. So while current.next is not equal to the head of the list that we were given as input, we're going to append the data elements until we get to that point. So until this next pointer, which is pointing to the head of the list that we were given, until we get to that point, we're going to append onto our newly formed circular linked list that we've defined up here. We're going to append the data elements at each of those nodes. So we're going to say, we're going to say split circular linked list dot append current.data. So we're going to append that to this new list. And then we're going to move right along in this list. So basically at this point, we'll have a list that has almost all of the elements that we require, but we're checking for current.next. So while current.next is not equal to, equal to the head of the list. So basically we're going to miss this one right here because that loop is going to break out prematurely. It's going to break out at this point because this.next is equal to the head. So we're not going to capture this node right here within this loop. So we want to make sure that we capture that next one by saying split clist.append current.data because we do care about that last node. So let's actually go ahead and print out both the two lists. So we'll print out the first list by just saying self.printlist. We'll print out a new line just to separate them. And then we'll print out the split list that we just created. So split list dot print list. So let's make sure that we've actually got uh, what we what we need here. So if we go ahead and save this and then run it, we get our lists. The first one, the, cir the first circular link list is AB. And the second one is CD. So that seems to work as expected. So let's just go ahead and throw in another node here just to see what happens. So let me add another node at the end of this list, which we'll call E. So if I write this, run it, we have our two lists split up again. We have the first two nodes in this split up here. And then the second circular link list has the remaining parts of the nodes CDE. So depending on where you define that midpoint will depend on whether or not, at least in this case, this first list has three nodes or two nodes. The way that we define the midpoint just makes this one have two and this one have three. Let's just take this a step further, add in another node. So we'll add in F. So again, we have six elements in this list. We'll save this, run it. And if we do that, we have an even split yet again because we have an even number of things to split against. So the first three elements, ABC, consists of the first circular linked list. And for the second part of that split, DEF consists of the second portion of the circular linked list. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you again for taking the time to watch and have a great day. Bye-bye.